Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Did you know that one of the most common reasons as to why people go to their doctor is because of skin issues? Things like dermatitis, eczema, when you think about psoriasis, these are the most common reasons as to why people make a doctor's appointment. And interestingly enough, they usually go to their primary care doctor who usually doesn't really quite know what to do and refers you off to dermatology. But we have to think about why that is. And a lot of it can come down to inflammation, chronic stress. We can look at the changes within the microbiome within the skin that can create this problem. Certainly, we know that nutritional deficiencies can contribute to some of the more common skin disorders. And we also recognize that vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acids certainly play a huge role into the health of our skin. And our skin is no joke. It's one of the largest organs when we think about the the body. So our skin is a direct communicator, not only with our internal environment, but also our external environment. So we always want to be aware of this. We have to understand that skin conditions certainly can contribute to a variety of different problems. And not only can they be uncomfortable, say if you have dry, itchy skin, um, but it can also create a lot of emotional problems as well. I mean, we've all seen the commercials where people were embarrassed because of their psoriasis flaring up. So I want to talk a little bit about certain things that you can be doing to address a lot of these common skin disorders and you know how to create a little bit better balance within the skin itself, both externally as well as internally. So I am Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and let's get right to it. Let's talk a little bit about some of the, the basics when it comes to skin health. Understanding that our skin is not only a barrier to protect us, so when we think about the external factors with the skin, but we also have to recognize that the skin is a major player in our immune system and helping with the regulation of our electrolyte levels and maintaining proper body temperature. So we know all of these different things about the skin and we can look at the anatomy um, of the skin and the, the different layers. So we have our superficial layer, which is the epidermis, and then we have our middle layer, which is the dermis, and then we have our subcutaneous, which is the deeper layer. And so oftentimes there can be issues that can arise within one or all of these layers that drive up the occurrence of different common skin conditions. And we know that there are different structural proteins that play a role into the main function of our skin. So we're looking at things like collagen and keratin. And we have to realize that the skin contains many different components. We can look at nerve endings. We can look at capillaries. We can look at the you know, elastic components of the skin that give to the strength of the skin. So there's a lot of different ways in which we can have um, these skin problems that can occur. And the manifestation of this can be for a variety of different reasons. So we can clearly always look at diet. And we know that standard American diet is going to be lacking in omega-3 fatty acids, which can lead to issues with the hydration of the skin and the proper functionality of the skin. Certainly we know that there are many different aspects in terms of metabolic components that can create problems within the skin surface itself. So insulin resistance, so in the setting of diabetes or um, pre-diabetes metabolic syndrome, we certainly know that there are many different areas where insulin resistance raise 
major havoc on the skin. So, you know, we can look at psoriasis. We clearly know that there is a close association between insulin resistance and the exacerbation of psoriasis, but yet you never hear about that. You just say, you know, here, take this immunotherapy drug that's going to kind of make your whole immune system shut down, but don't go catch a common cold or that may be a bad thing. Um, but yet we don't even look at it like, well, hey, maybe we should do an insulin test or maybe we should make sure that we change our diet. These are, are common things that we, we need to really kind of pay attention to because if you are dealing with something like psoriasis, which is basically an inflammatory condition, that creates these patches of dry, flaking, itchy skin. And that inflammation over time creates really pronounced rough patches. And oftentimes people will get it in areas like their elbows, for example. And we have to understand that this is a systemic issue. This is not just limited to looking at the exterior of the skin. We have to understand what is going on internally in the body to create this type of manifestation. And we know that people who have things like psoriasis have an increased risk of having other inflammatory disorders. So we can look at cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, diabetes. We know that there is this strong link between psoriasis and our overall systemic health. Now, we have to look and say, why is this happening? And what can we be doing about this? So clearly, diet is going to be the first place that we start. And a Mediterranean diet, we know, certainly can be beneficial for someone who is dealing with any type of a skin condition, including something like psoriasis. And they have done clinical research studies showing that that higher consumption of those really important healthy fats can lower the severity of psoriasis. So you would think that anyone who is being treated for psoriasis would also be told the major impact that the foods can be having on their health. Unfortunately, that's not usually the case. But we can also look at the different nutrients that can be taken in that setting. So besides just the strict adherence to a Mediterranean diet, we can also look at different interventions such as fish oil every single day or krill oil, or say, for example, if you're wanting a plant-based version, then using flax every single day. There is a strong correlation between vitamin D insufficiency or deficiency and the exacerbation of or severity thereof of psoriasis. So we know that vitamin D is very important for those who are dealing not only with eczema, but also with psoriasis. And it's important to, to make sure that you have your serum vitamin D levels tested. So in the event that this happens to be an issue and you say, oh yeah, look at my vitamin D levels a little bit low, and then you start to get it up to a healthier level, you may find once again that the psoriasis starts to improve. And why is that? Because once again, we can go back and look at how the skin is playing a key and crucial role when it comes to the immune system. So remember, when we're looking at skin disorders. It's not just limited to what we're seeing on the exterior. We have to think about what is actually occurring occurring internally. And so if we have this systemic inflammatory process that's occurring, then we know that, of course, it can come out and present itself on the exterior. And that's usually where, where people recognize it. So there are many different types of or subtypes of psoriasis. So you have the plaque psoriasis. That's the most common. This is the one that you see usually on TV on the commercials, and this is where you get the the thickening of the skin, and it's you know dry, scaly, very very uncomfortable. Um, there's gutate psoriasis. There's a pustular form, which is characterized by this uninfected pus blisters. Now that usually is limited more to the the hands. Now this is certainly something that can be incredibly problematic. Um, but we know that there are these these different forms. And certainly we have all probably heard of psoriatic arthritis. And so when we talk about that inflammatory problem 
Well, we can look no further than looking at inflammation within the joints, which is also correlated with that inflammation that occurs within the skin. So we have to be able to address these factors and lower our risk because we don't want to be trending towards you know, cardiovascular disease. And we know that there is certainly a link between psoriasis and cardiovascular disease. We don't want that to happen. So looking at those risk factors and understanding that there are many different things that can create this type of an environment for these inflammatory skin conditions to occur. Certainly there can be underlying infections. Um, uh, strep infections certainly have been linked with certain types of psoriasis. Um, certainly there are different medications that can oftentimes worsen a skin condition such as psoriasis. We can look at things like ACE inhibitors, um, even certain beta blockers may create this type of an environment. And you have to look and say, okay, well, why would that be? You know, is it because it's depleting certain nutrients? So that's why diet, first and foremost, becomes so incredibly important. So we do want to make sure that we are doing everything in our power to, you know, change what we know we can change, which is the foods that we are putting into our mouths every single day. And then we also want to look at all of the different ways in which these different nutrients can be beneficial. So talking about the vitamin D and just assessing what is my vitamin D level, making sure we're getting enough exposure to omega-3 fatty acids. Um, I look at our tocotrienol with pine bark extract, for example, this can be a really powerful um, tool in your arsenal when it comes to common skin conditions because that pycnogenol is a very, very powerful antioxidant. Combining that with the nourishing, hydrating, and antioxidant value of the tocotrienols can really give you kind of a, a good one-two punch. So there are a lot of different ways in which we can use different nutrients to really help to support and optimize the health of our skin. We can look at things such as um, curcumin. We know that curcumin is very targeted towards systemic inflammation across all different spectrums. So when we're talking about COX-1, COX-2, and the LOX inflammatory pathways. So even for people who are dealing with things like psoriasis and eczema, many times when they add something like a very powerful curcumin extract, like we have our curcumin with five locks, which is boswellia, this oftentimes can really target a lot of that systemic inflammation and you can see the value added in terms of the way that your skin is reacting to that. Um, obviously, anything we can do to support and strengthen our immune system is going to be advantageous. So when we look at probiotics, for example, which we know can be a major player, so helping to support a healthy microbiome, um, zinc is another thing where many times we, we forget about the role that zinc plays not only within the immune system, but also within the health of the skin. And they have done different studies where they have given zinc supplementation to those who were dealing with psoriasis and they have seen significant improvement in their overall skin health. So there's a lot of different ways to address um, this when it comes to a natural stance. Um, clearly, when it comes to issues such as eczema, we know that this is, once again, a very common um, skin condition and something that can really create a lot of discomfort overall. Um, and what you know you can be doing is, once again, making sure that the diet is not working against you. Certainly, we don't want that to happen. But we can also look at that combination, once again, of things like zinc, fish oil, vitamin D. These are all different nutrients that we know can be incredibly, incredibly impactful. Now, interestingly enough, they've done different studies where they have found things like evening primrose oil, which is actually an omega-6 fatty acid, which you would think, okay, well, that should actually create more inflammation. But they have found that the um, GLA or the gamma linolenic acid within the evening primrose can actually help to support and modulate the inflammatory response in that setting of eczema. So there's a lot of ways to 
help the body regulate um, the inflammatory response. So from things such as resveratrol and curcumin to looking at just the basics, vitamin D, zinc, um, tocotrienols, the, that vitamin E, there's a lot of ways that we can try to build up our natural nutrients internally. And then obviously topically, there are many different things that you can look at as well. Obviously, we don't want to be putting chemicals on our skin. So when we're thinking about very hydrating and nourishing topical options, then I would look at things like the invite protective hand cream. And the reason why I go with that is because it's a little bit thicker than say just the lotion. Certainly the moisturizing body silk lotion is a good option as well. But for those who are dealing with really rough, dry patches of skin, whether that's coming from eczema or psoriasis, then it would be advantageous to use something that's a little bit thicker and it has all of those natural nutrients in it. So it doesn't contain the parabens and the colorants and the fragrance and the alcohols, things that can once again be stripping the skin. And we want to make sure that we maintain that protective barrier. So when you're utilizing something that has natural nutrients, such as grapefruit extract. So it's kind of like having your own little resveratrol cream to apply to the skin and having things like grape seed oil along with topical vitamin E and rosemary extract. This can be incredibly, incredibly supportive when the skin is really taxed and is experiencing a lot of that inflammation. So it's kind of a triple action in terms of skin health when we're dealing with things such as psoriasis and eczema. First and foremost, we need to change the diet. Secondly, we need to look and see, you know, are we getting adequate vitamin D and zinc and omega-3s? If not, that's an easy fix right there. I mean, you can always assess your vitamin D levels in terms of your blood testing. Um, but then we also have to look at other nutrients beyond that, things that may be advantageous to add to your, to your arsenal. So the curcumin, the resveratrol, looking at that protective hand cream. There's many different ways for you to target your skin health, clearly taking things like collagen, um, also going to be a beneficial thing to consider. And as I mentioned too, strengthen that immune system. So the probiotic for many people who deal with chronic skin conditions will find that simple things, probiotic, zinc, vitamin D, fish oil can make a huge, huge difference. So that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Now do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. And we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. 